Hey guys, Majeffries here and welcome to Somerset Hills International Resort. Um, now I know what you're thinking, it's a bit crap. That's basically because I've, as you can see from the, the menu bar on the right hand side, I've started a custom scenario. Um, the idea for this park is, I've been planning it for about three years now I think, um, and it's only recently that I've been able to get the uh, hardware and some of the software that I need in order to actually bring my idea to fruition. So, basically what's going to happen is I'm going to start this as a custom scenario. I'm going to build, first of all as you can see, the land mass that I need for the park, or the resort I should say, as uh, all will become clear very soon. Um, and then once I've got to a certain level that I'm happy with, I'm going to save the scenario and I'm going to start it as a real park with real money. <clears throat> and then the goal for me will be to make as much money as I can from the structure that I'd already built in the scenario uh, and try and turn it into a successful resort. Now, I know some of you are probably wondering why I keep using the word resorts and not theme park or amusement park or anything like that. Uh, and the reason that is, is because this is going to be a three park wide, uh, well, yeah, this is going to be three parks and a hotel. That is the plan. Uh, the way this is going to work is I am going to have a normal generic theme park, like something. You know, like Alton Towers, or Fort Park, or Chesterton, something like that. Uh, as you know, I'm from the UK, so I use those three as examples. Um, but then next door to the theme park, I'm going to have a safari park. With, you know, wild animals, um, lots of animal-based rides and attractions and shops and things like that. Um, and then next door to that, I'm going to have a water park. So... Because I will have one of each kind, basically, um, I'm going to complete the set. Because, you know, Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 now, you've got soaked and wild, you can build water parks and you can build safari parks. Um, so I'm going to use all three. And again, I keep using the word resort because these three parks are going to be on three separate sides of a courtyard. The fourth side of the courtyard will obviously be, you know, entrance and exit to car parks and things like that um, and I'm thinking of maybe including a railway station which will take guests to and from the local cities, towns, whatever um, but in the middle of this courtyard, Somerset Courtyard I've decided to call it, will be a hotel structure um, I'm hoping to build it as just an empty hotel shell uh, you know, reason being it's, it's time consuming to try and build a building and you know, Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 doesn't have the best scenery built into the game. Um, I haven't downloaded any custom scenery onto this computer yet. Uh, I'm still setting up how I want to actually build this park. So until I know exactly what I'm going to do with this, with these three parks and the resort around it, uh, I'm just going to keep the basic package that Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 offers. So the, is it six or seven or maybe even eight scenery types? Uh, keep it quite basic for now uh, but you'll see as the series goes on um, I'll be bringing more and more custom scenery into the game for use with you know different rides and, and uh, different you know theming and things like that and I'll also be bringing in um, custom track rides and maybe some custom flat rides uh, basically t to give me the kind of rides that I want in order to build this park or this resort. I keep saying park now. Now I said I gotta remember to call it a resort. It is a resort. There will be a hotel. There's three parks, not one. I'm going for a very Disney esque approach to this. Um <clears throat> it's not it's gonna no good it's not gonna be anywhere near as big as Disney. And I'd never even wish to say that I'd be better than Disney. Um but I'm going for that kind of idea of more than one park in a resort. Um I'm only going for one hotel Again, it's very time consuming to build hotel buildings on this game, uh, which has just reminded me that was what I was actually talking about, so hotel building. Um, I build one hotel. Uh, I'm going to build one hotel. 
it's going to be a fairly big hotel. Uh, I'm going to try and keep it as empty on the inside as I can. So, keep guests from getting lost in there. Or, you know, just... It's, a, it's an empty shell that happens to fill the middle of my courtyard. So, from the outside it looks like a hotel. From the inside it's just a plain building. Um, you know, I, I never plan on actually going inside the building and looking around. So, uh... Yeah, it, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. It'll look realistic from the outside, that's what's important. Um, I haven't decided what type of hotel it's going to be. I haven't decided if it's going to be themed or if it's going to be generic. Um, I haven't really decided on a name for it. I've got a kind of like work in progress name. I'm going to, like, in my head, I have this idea of calling it the Somerset. Um, I have this, basically when I was a kid, I used to go to Somerset a fair amount with family and... Uh, I sort of fell in love with the place. Um, it's been years since I actually last went there, and there's not that much of it I can remember in all honesty. But Somerset Hills to me sounds like a really nice name for a theme park, so or even a resort, as I keep forgetting to call it. So that's that's what this is going to be. It's going to be called Somerset Hills International Resort. The international part of it, um, mainly because you know I hope to have people. Well, obviously I can't in the game, but in my head I'd like to have people from all around the world travel to visit Somerset Hills. Um, and there's a unique twist, which has been done before, but hopefully the way I do it is unique. Uh, which also brings the international section into this. Um, now, the reason I say this idea has been done before is because uh, if anyone has been to Bush Gardens Williamsburg or Busch Gardens Europe, I I think they're called Williamsburg now, just Williamsburg, um, you'll know that they have areas themed after certain countries. So you've got an old England style, you've got a German style, I think there's two German styles actually, there's an Italian section, uh, no there's two Italian sections as well actually I think. Um, they didn't really broaden their horizons much when they built that park did they? Um, so what I have decided to do with one of my parks, which I still haven't named yet, um, that's going to be the theme park park of the resort. Uh, is I'm going to have I think it's twelve yeah twelve zones. Each zone is going to be themed after a country. Um, the plans aren't final yet. They may be subject to change as the project is progressing. But for now. I'm fairly happy with the countries that I have chosen and the style in which I'm going to represent these countries. Um, I'm not going to reveal any more details other than that at this point. The reason being, if anything was to happen to my park, my resort, during, you know, between making videos and filming videos and things like that, um, I tend to change my mind a lot, as you're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, I had this really good idea for an entrance building for like the main entrance to the resort as if you're walking from the car park and then as I went through building it I thought this really isn't going to work so get rid of the lot basically. Um, but yeah I'm, I'm going to keep my ideas to myself for now in case my ideas do change. Uh, the bits that I know are sticking are the Somerset Hotel which it may be called the Somerset at the end of it, it might not be. Um, and Somerset Courtyard, which that is a name that will be sticking throughout this process. Uh, I like the idea of that. It fits in with, it's a very generic name for uh, the area. It's like a Disney Village-esque kind of place. It links the parks together. That's all it's there for. And it has the hotel in the middle. Um, it's like a through fair, thoroughfare. Um, what I'm going to do now is build a little path. And... You know, I got bored building this, and I'm sure you guys are going to get bored watching this. So I'm going to speed this bit up, and I will see you guys on the other side. So I will talk to you soon.
Okay guys, we are back and uh, as you can see I've built a massive courtyard and filled it in with what I think looks like courtyard-ish, well courtyard-ish grass, but um, you know I've only put it in there now as a sort of like a decoration template kind of thing. Um, it will change. I don't really like that type of grass. It looks good on small areas but on a big area like that it looks almost alien like in some ways I suppose. Um, again like I said it's just there for decoration it's not there for anything special. Um, but as you can see now I am building a hop on hop off tram system. Uh, the reason for this is if you go to any kind of theme park there is always some form of transportation. You know, it, it, whether it has one stop or two stops or even in some cases just one that you get on, on and off at. Um, there's always some kind of monorail or chairlift or railway or something like that that takes you from one area of the park to the other. So what this is, is um, it links all four sides of the courtyard area. So from where you come in from the car park there will be a station um, at the theme park entrance there will be a station at the safari park entrance there will be a station and at the water park entrance there will be a station um, and that just means if you come out of the theme park and you want to go to the water park you just hop on the tram go two stops and you're there <clears throat> likewise if you're at the safari park and you want to go to the theme park you can I mean okay you can walk, just walk around the corner or you can get on the tram and take it for three stops and you're at the theme park entrance um, it's also a good way of sort of keeping the numbers up in your park capacity wise so if your park is close to full capacity which I'm hoping Somerset Hills will be roughly around full capacity um, if you build a big transportation system it gets people from A to B quickly but it also means whilst they're on the transport ride there's room in other areas of the park for more people to come in um, it's the same with all rides really in my parks. I like to keep big capacity rides or rides that have a big throughput just so that I can actually cater for the masses as it were. I can have lots of people in my park at one time. Uh, there'll be no huge queues, there'll be no complaints about huge queues. Basically they can just walk onto a ride or walk into the queue of a ride, be there for about 10-15 minutes maybe is a good time for me get on the ride, get off the ride and you know there'll be a big wide open pathway that they can then walk to the next ride of their choice that's the plan, that's the philosophy of Somerset Hills um, there's a few philosophies of Somerset Hills, that is one of them about capacity uh, there's a few others about types of ride and things like that and I'm also going to go for the Disney idea of uh, the whole park is like being in a stage show kind of thing so you have like a backstage area where the staff go when they're not on duty um, which you won't be able to see from any public areas of the park just keeps that nice and hidden and out of the way um, each area of the park tells a story so it's not just there because we decided to have a love forest it's actually there's a backstory behind why it's a forest and why it's not a jungle or why it's not a desert um, each ride itself will have a story that ties it in with that area so why it's been built in that area and not been built somewhere else in the park uh, and yeah you know just it keeps the whole mystique of being in a park where you genuinely believe that the ride you're about to go on is set in an old temple or is set in an abandoned mine you know um, and again that's exactly what Disney have done and actually having said Use Disney as an example, the uh, UK theme parks like Alton Towers, the, uh, Thorpe Park, Chessington, <clears throat> a lot of their rides you really do believe that you are in those areas. So, um, you know, for example, at Chessington you've got Tomb Blaster, which is actually quite an old ride now, but when you're even when you're in the queue and you've got the monitors telling you about the ride, you feel as though you are going into an old Egyptian tomb and, you know, you've got to just defeat the uh, ancient spirits that haunt the tomb and you know it's just it really brings that idea of what's about to happen in front of you um, and makes you believe that it's actually real even though there's something in the back of your mind going you know it's just a ride it's just a theme park none of this is real you, you want to believe that it's actually happening to you 
and that's exactly what I want from Somerset Hills as well. I want people to be going on the rides thinking they are in the scenario in which the ride is set and not just, oh, I'm going on a roller coaster that's got a few trees and a building around it, you know? Um, I am filling time at the moment because, you know, as you can see, this tram system, uh, it took, well, it didn't take that long to build, but in testing it and choosing the right colours for it and type of theming that I wanted to put on it, um, getting it all set up so I can just click open and off it goes. Uh, that's To me that's quite time consuming because I like to get the ride right first time. So then once it's open I tend not to come back to it unless I see something that can be improved on it. Um, one thing I started doing on my transport rides is putting block brakes on which some of you are probably thinking what, why is he doing that? The reason being um, it stops like you can you can tick the box that says leave if another train arrives at station but no park that I'm aware of particularly on railways and monorail systems has it where one train enters the station whilst another train is there like the monorail at Alton Towers the train waits outside the station until the train in front of it is cleared so even then it's like a roller coaster in that it has block sections and you know it it, in that case it works like a proper railway in that it has block sections and a train won't enter a block until the train before it has cleared that block so I'd like to keep my parks as realistic as possible therefore I block section all my transport rides now with the exception of chairlifts because you know they're on a piece of string it's a continuous piece of string or rope as you, whatever you want to call it um, you can't just have one meter of the rope or cable not running yet a meter further down the cable it's running that doesn't work physically that's impossible so again to keep him with the realism not that I think you can even block section chairlifts on this game I've never tried because as I said it's unrealistic therefore I don't bother even looking at that possibility um, building this ride a couple of problems arose the first of which was what the hell am I going to do with the queue path because as you can see the exit path I could just have to spit the guests out straight onto the uh, courtyard outer border pathway place um, but the entrance you've got to get it from one side of the track to the other side but at the same time do you cross the path or do you bring it down next to the path um, so again I decided to abandon that idea temporarily and move on to the next part of the courtyard hoping that in doing this part of the courtyard an idea will spring to me. Now this part of the courtyard is, to me this was the risk taker. How do I build a hotel in the middle of a courtyard but without making it look too plain and boring like oh someone's just put a building in a field. I wanted the hotel to be a signature structure of the resort and maybe even in some cases the landmark of the resort. So you know like Disney parks, like uh, let's use Florida as an example because they've got many parks. You've got the Magic Kingdom has the castle, the Animal Kingdom has the Tree of Life, uh, Epcot has the is it Spaceship Earth globe, I think it's called Spaceship Earth, and the studios has the Saucer, Saucer and Mickey hat. Um, I wanted something like that but for the whole resort. Each park will have some kind of landmark to itself as well, but the whole resort needs a landmark. You know, you could arrive and say, oh look, there's the hotel, or there's the such and such, that must be Somerset Hills. So, in this case, I have chosen the hotel to be a kind of landmark. Now it's a question of, what can I do to make it look quite landmarky? What I decided to do was build the hotel in the middle of an island or build it on an island in the middle of a lake hoping that the lake itself and the trees around the lake and the building itself will be memorable enough to create a landmark where you can go look there's the lake or look there's the river wherever it ends up looking like there's the island there's the hotel and I'm not the best at building big projects like this because I tend to get not so much bored but frustrated during the process and I end up sort of taking shortcuts and cutting corners which you can see I'm doing here because I want to get an idea of what the lake might look like and the island might look like before I actually 
actually make it proper. So in this case, I'm just taking a huge chunk of land and lowering it down a certain level, building a rough outline of what I want the building to look like, and hoping to God that it looks okay. Um, as you'll see later on, it ends up looking ugly. But uh, that's for later. For now, what I did here was I wanted the slope to be quite even. So, you know, I, I lowered it, I think it was 10 in total, but 5 first and then 5 on the inside one. And as you can see, you end up with two lots of 5 sloping down. Uh, it's quite even, it's quite smooth. Um, but I mean, there you can see at that, at that point I was assessing it thinking that actually looks quite ugly and the checkered squares didn't help because you see there the shadow and also when I have the grid up as I'm building the building um, it really looks ugly because you've got the grid of the game's grid and then you've got the grid that the checkered ground gives you and they don't quite match up and if you're looking at it from above like I was doing when I was building the uh, tram system you can see how confusing it gets especially when you're trying to count squares in order to uh, get the right amount so um, I do stick with it with the grass hoping that I'll be able to handle it properly um, what I'm doing at this point is I think was it six across lowering that down in order to create a bed to put the river or the moat lake kind of thing uh, and basically I'm building the island at the same time um, the original idea for the hotel was there would be like a basement level sort of underground as it were uh, and that level would be for you know storage purposes maybe have a kitchen down there or something like that again this is all uh, it will be given the impression of but it won't you won't actually be able to see it because there's scenery is not available in this game uh, you'd have a basement level anyway and then you'd have a certain number of levels above starting at the ground level which would be where that bridge or where that like path level is there would be a bridge going into the hotel building um, and then from there <clears throat> there'll be floors above with rooms on guest rooms uh, I was contemplating putting a swimming pool in, but I decided against it when I then came up with the idea of the water park. So I thought you can't have a water park then have a pool in a hotel next door. But again, like with the pathways, this is getting a little bit boring. So I'm going to time lapse this one as well. Um, I can't remember how long the time lapse actually is, but uh, what I do know for definite is at the end of this time lapse, you'll have a very good idea of what I actually want this hotel to look like. So. Uh, once this is done guys, I will see you on the other side.
So yeah, guys, we are back. Uh, and I know I said that you'd have a fair idea of how I want the hotel to look once this previous time lapse is finished. Um, but you know, again, as you saw from it, I really wasn't happy with how it was going. Um, and I, I, when I'm playing Roller Coaster Tycoon, I get to the point where I'm so fed up with how the park looks that I can't even be bothered to actually try and fix it. I just want to get it off my screen, move on to a new park, try working from new ideas, or try and incorporate existing ideas from the previous park that went right into a new park that won't go wrong, basically. Um, with this park, I do not want that to happen because, like I said before, I've been waiting to do this park for three years, I said, yeah, three years. I think it's actually four years that I've been waiting to build something like this. Um, I've been waiting for the sort of the ideas to come to me rather than I just throw things into a park and hope that it all works. Um, I have an idea of how I want the park to look. I know I said that I'm not fully, like nothing is confirmed yet, but there are parts in my mind that are absolute definites. Like I said before, there will definitely be three parts. There will definitely be a hotel in the middle. This courtyard is going to be the pinnacle of all that. Everything that comes from the park and the resort as a whole is based around what this courtyard ends up looking like, basically. Um, so there's real pressure on me as it happens to actually get it right. Because if I get it wrong, it looks awful. I'll feel awful because of it. Um, I won't want to do any more of it. And you know, I'll end up just quitting and starting again somewhere else and then you'd end up with the whole trying to make it look good again whilst at the same time still kicking myself because I ballsed up the previous one. Um, so the island is built as you can see and I decided at this point that I would actually look at what I could do with the hotel first and then build the rest of the courtyard around it because with buildings on RCT3 um, I wanted to build a massive building for the hotel as I've already said it's going to be a standout building throughout the entire resort um, it's going to be a striking building I'm going to be able to recognize it as soon as you see it um, so I wanted to get that bit done first I hope that in finishing that the rest of the courtyard will sort of come to me as it were like uh, I can do little bits and pieces around the outside of the hotel and it will slowly start to shape itself into a really good entrance plaza for a, a amusement park resort. Um, I probably should mention at this point about colour schemes. Normally when I'm working with my own ideas on Road Coast Tycoon, um, I normally go for a blue and white colour scheme because well, one of my favourite colours is blue. It looks really good, it, it, like professional, um, and you know the colour white goes with it quite nicely. So, normally, that would be my principal choice. However, because this is going to be a unique venture for me, as well as for you guys out there watching this, um, I just decided to do something different, hoping that in doing something different. Uh, I'll end up with a park that's different and I won't end up having to abandon the project because I'm not happy with how it's going. Um, so I can't remember how late into this actual video I chose the colour scheme. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, I tend to record the actual footage first and then do the audio afterwards, which is why I um and are a lot because I'm trying to remember what it actually is that I did for most of this video. Um, but I do decide on a colour scheme. Uh, I'm really happy with the colour scheme. The entire hotel is based around this colour scheme and the logos for the resort once they are finished and in order to be finished they must first be started um, they will all follow this colour scheme and there will be a logo for the park uh, well there will be a logo for each one of the parks all three of them there will be a logo for the resort as a whole and there will be a logo for the hotel um, and I'm going to try and fit especially the resort and the hotel they will follow the colour scheme the other three parks might have their own colour schemes depending on what I decide to, to later on do but in case you're wondering now because I've left it long enough the color scheme is going to be green and purple green for like forests and hills purple because it goes with green that's the only reason I can think of to put purple in um, 
but again this is going to be a lengthy process starting this construction so uh, for the third time in this video I'm going to switch it to a time lapse the reason being I don't want you guys to sit here and get bored this footage was originally two hours long so I've shortened it down to 49 minutes now um, so yeah I'm going to time lapse this bit guys uh, enjoy the building leave some comments below about what you think and I will see you after
So yeah guys, this is what the hotel looks like to start with. Uh, as you can see, there's plenty more to do. So uh, I'll be bringing you more of this. So until next time guys, I will see you soon.